The Bush's bitter backlash. That's the subject of tonight's bonus angle. Until Donald Trump came along, the Republican Party hadn't won a national election since 2004, when George W. Bush narrowly defeated John Kerry. After that, it was pretty much all downhill. The GOP went on to lose the House, the Senate, and the presidency twice. The nation had become disillusioned by the enormous physical and financial toll of our interventions in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Grassroots voters rose up against George W. Bush's immigration amnesty and his nomination of his pal Harriet Myers to the Supreme Court. But now the Bushes are lashing out at Donald Trump. You saw the recent not so veiled hit on the sitting president by George W. Bush. And by the way, neither Bush, we find out, voted for Donald Trump. Well, that's a shock. And George H.W. in a new book called Trump a blowhard. A thousand points of insult. George W. joined in on the sniping. He said, this guy doesn't know what it means to be president. And his father also said of Trump, I don't like him. I don't know much about him. Not thrilled about him being the leader. Well, this coming from a guy, God bless him, great patriot though, he didn't exactly thrill the voters himself in 1992. To Bush 41 and Bush 43, where were you when we needed you during Obama's two terms? We needed you then to speak out against outrages that were being perpetrated on the American public, against Obamacare, after Benghazi. How about when the IRS was targeting conservatives? Where were you when we needed you? Silent, crickets, totally silent. Or did we have to read your lips? George W. is worried that Trump's tenure may mean that we've seen the last Republican president. Funny, huh? That's what all of us thought in 2008, when W was doing the big bailouts, had 26% approval rating, and had us bogged down in two wars. Until the Tea Party came around in 2009, conservatives fretted that the country was lost for a generation. The Bush family apparently can't come to In recent years, the Bush family has become pretty tight with the Clintons and the Obamas. They've found more common ground with them than they have with the grassroots voters in their own party. And if Bush era policies, let's face it, of open borders and open markets and endless wars was so popular, the former two term governor of Florida, he was popular when he was governor too, Jeb Bush. Well, he would have handily beaten that political neophyte, Donald Trump, in his home state primary. But, well, we know how that ended, don't we? Low energy indeed. Remember the show Dynasty? It worked in the 1980s because you had Joan Collins and John Forsyth and their leading roles. But the country had had it with the Bush dynasty and what their policies had wrought on America. It wasn't personal, it was the policies. So the voters canceled that political show. No amount of grousing by the bitter Bushes is going to change that. The voters are simply not that into them anymore. What I said in my CPAC speech in February of 2016, and I wrote about in my new book, Billionaire at the Barricades, turned out to be depressingly accurate. Jeb and Hillary should have just dispensed with all the formalities and just run on the same ticket in 2016. Think of the bumper sticker. Would have been pretty catchy. Clush 2016, what difference does it make? All right, that's all the time we have tonight. Shannon Bream is ready to take over, take over from here with Fox News at night. Miss Shannon. Good to see you tonight, Laura. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to Fox News at Night. I'm